and today what we're going to be looking at is uh, instead of uh, taking uh, the shape and then uh, whatever surface that we have and building more shapes out of it, like triangles or circles or squares, um, instead we're going to take um, we are going to take that kind of shaded region and we are basically going to uh, take it and spin it around our uh, uh, different axes. And what this is going to create um, is some nice, some more nice 3D surfaces that we can uh, figure out the volume of. And we're going to figure out the volume the same way we were figuring out the volume earlier, which is by um, taking an integral of an area formula over a certain boundary. That's what we're going to be looking at and working on here. So uh, let's get ourselves started here. All right, and I'm going to draw my curves here. Um, I got y equals 0. I've got x equals 2. Here's, uh, here's 2. I've decided this is 2. Um, and then I have y equals x squared, which is just my pr basic parabola. So here is my. Uh, Make sure it dips down there. There's my region. Hopefully that's what you uh, shaded in and have and what that looks like for you. So now what we're going to do is we are going to revolve this region uh, bounded by these lines or these parabolas. Uh, we're going to take this region and spin it around the x-axis. So across here, uh, we have, uh, if we're, uh, First off, we need to flip it over the x-axis, because eventually we're going to spin it around the x-axis. But to see the part that actually is going to show up on the board, um, that means that it's going to spin around and hit the board down here. So we basically need to reflect it over the x-axis. So that means that uh, this parabola uh, is going to be reflected and come down here as well. And then the this vertical line is also also needs to appear down here. So this is my uh, region that's uh, reflected. Uh, and then I'm going to draw out in a section uh, spinning this around the x-axis. And what this is going to look like um, is it's going to look like a little disk that is spun around uh, the axis. So I have uh, basically a circle drawn out that comes straight through the x-axis and then goes behind it so that we are spinning it around the x-axis. So let me draw another one. So there's a circle that's coming out at you. There's a circle that's uh, coming behind the board uh, toward uh, Mr. Padilla. And here's another uh, even smaller disk. So we have all of these uh, different disks that we are spinning around. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to accumulate each of these different disks out from 0 to 2. We're going to accumulate out these different, the area of these disks and compile all of them and add all of them together, and that will give us our volume. So accumulate out all these areas and basically add them together, and that will give us our volume. Well, if we're accumulating and adding up over a region, that sounds like an integral. So 
So these disks uh, that are being spun around uh, are all circles. And we know how to find the area of a circle. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So what this is going to look like is we're going to have an integral. Um, it's going to go from 0 to 2. Hopefully it's making sense that we should go from 0 to 2. Of whatever my area formula is. And I want to write it in terms of x. So similar to what we did with our cross sections, I want to know what my air, uh, what my radius is, so that I can plug it in in terms of x. Well, my radius, if I draw it out on these disks, is this distance right here, and this distance right here, and this little distance right here. So, what is deciding that distance? Well, it's the distance between zero. It always starts at zero, and it always ends up at a point on this curve, and a point on this curve, and a point on this curve. So what's determining the distance is this curve right here, this x squared function, the parabola. So if I want the distance for the radius in terms of x, it's going to be x squared. It's whatever this y coordinate is. And the y coordinate in terms of x is x squared. So we're going to take that, uh, that area formula there and put it inside of the integral, pi r squared. And r, in this case, is x squared. So we have pi times our radius squared. What's our radius? Our radius is x squared. So we have pi times x squared squared. So that is our uh, that is our setup. Any questions uh, so far before I go to taking the antiderivative and all that? Because that's the setup part. That's the new part. So once we drew our curve, uh, we flipped it over the x-axis because that's what we're going over, and it spun around our x-axis and formed to that radius, right? This was a circle, so our area was pi r squared. And so our radius in terms of x was uh, getting to this parabola. Pi goes out in front. Since it's just a number, it can go out in front of the integral, and we don't have to worry about it until the very end of the problem. x squared squared is x to the fourth. So now we take the antiderivative from 0 to 2. Antiderivative of x to the fourth is 1 fifth x to the fifth. Plug in 2 minus plug in 0. This is one of the few that I'll actually work out kind of more slowly by hand. I don't want to spend too much on integrals and calculations of the integrals. I want to spend most of the time on the setup. But in case you forgot how to take an integral somehow, uh, plug in 2 minus plug in 0. 2 to the fifth minus 1 fifth, 0 to the fifth. Two to the fifth is uh, 32. 2, 4, 8. 16, 32. So we have 32 over 5 times pi, which is going to be 32 pi over 5.
for volume units cubed. So there's my, uh, there's my surface. I might want to zoom out a little bit to get up to four. But then if I take this and spin it around the x-axis, uh, here's what is, it is going to look like. This is the thing that we just found the volume of. Um, there it is from kind of the side along view with the x squared uh, sitting there. Uh, here's what the different disks out from zero to two look like. You see, they're get, as I move from left to right, they're getting bigger. That's because x squared is getting farther away from the x-axis as I move from left to right. And so this is my uh, this is my kind of disk shape that we just found the volume of. And it ended up being 32 pi over 5. Questions on that? All right, let's take a look at the next one. How far have we got? I'm going to get through these three. That's my goal. Let's see if we hit it. All right, x squared plus 1, x plus 3. Um, go ahead and make those graphs. Bounds of the integral were pretty easy on the first one because we went from uh, we just went from zero out to two, and that was pretty obvious. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's a little bit trickier. You need to find those points of intersection, and I would uh, suggest doing that by uh, setting these two things equal to each other. So when does x squared plus one equal x plus three? so that you know where those points of intersection are. Hopefully you have something that looks like that. We need to know where these points are. It should be x squared minus x minus 2, which should factor pretty easily. Okay, so far? All right. So that means uh, when we go to write our integral, it is going to be from negative 1 up to 2.
But when I spin this around my x-axis, first off, I need to uh, take this and reflect it over the x-axis. So let me do that. Uh, so let me draw uh, the parabola coming reflecting down here. Uh, let me draw uh, the line getting flipped uh, through here and there and there. Boom. All right. All right, this one is more difficult to draw the spinning around because uh, what we actually have uh, is not just a straight circle, right? Because there's this empty space in the middle. So we need to draw out that empty space in the middle. And then here is the space that we actually want. Uh, and this is why this is called uh, uh, talking about disks and washers. So the first one was a disk, where it was just kind of a straight circle. Um, and, this one is a, um, and this one is a washer. Not like a thing that washes your clothes, like, a, like you know, it's hollow on the inside, or you know, empty on the inside. And, so this, the, this one looks like a washer. So instead of just a straight out pi r squared, we need to figure out how to find the area of this shape. So let me draw it out in a two dimensional space here so that we can talk about how we would find this area. Well, we would find this area by, let's find the area of this entire big circle and then let's find the area of this tiny little circle that we don't want and subtract it out. So the area of this washer, uh, we have, uh, we're going to call uh, the big radius uh, a capital R, and we are going to call uh, the small radius little r. And so we're going to have the area of the whole circle is pi times big R squared. And then we're going to subtract off the smaller circle that we don't want. That's going to be pi times little r squared. And I'm going to go ahead and factor a pi out of that, pi times big R squared minus little r squared. And for washers, this is the formula that we're going to use when we do these areas. It's going to be pi times big R squared minus little r squared. So we need to figure out what is big R and what is little r. Our big R is this distance right here. So it would be the distance from the x-axis out to my top curve. So that distance is just uh, from, the di from here out to the top curve. That is just going to be my line. It's determined by my line. So in terms of x, big R is x plus 3.
What is little r? Well, little r is just this little distance right here. What determines how far away that little distance is? Let me draw another washer so that we can draw out little r a little better. So there is my, uh, there's another washer. And we are looking for little r, which is that distance, that small distance. Well, that's determined by where the parabola is this time. Right? It's the distance between the x-axis and the parabola. So that's determined by my x squared plus 1. And so now we're going to put that into our integral here, dx. So I'm going to go ahead and send the pi out in front. It's just a number. It comes out in front. And then remember, our formula is going to be big R squared minus little r squared. So we have big R squared minus little r squared. What was big R? Big R was x plus 3. Little r was x squared plus 1. So this would be uh, our integral. I'll give you a, uh, a minute or two. By the way, x plus 3 squared is not x squared plus 3 squared. It is not x squared plus 9. Right? It would expand out to be x plus 3 times x plus 3. I'll give you about two minutes or so and see uh, how far you can get in computing this integral. So while you're doing that, let me show you what this looks like so that you can have a better visual here. Revolve surface. Go here first. So this is my parabola in my line. Oh wait, 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 wait! I messed up. That's what happened. Okay. I want to go from negative. How about from negative one to two, like the uh, problem says? That's better. That's better. And then let's do the other curve. Boom. All right, that's better. So this is my uh, this is my two-dimensional surface, and it's being spun around. Here's what this looks like. So notice that on the inside here, it's hollow. Uh, let me, here's the two-dimensional, there's the line, and then the parabola's there on the inside. That's why it was my little r. So it's like a lamp. That's the thing we're finding the volume of. Uh, 
uh, the antiderivative sh here should end up being, uh, you should get an x to the fourth thing, obviously. So the antiderivative is going to be, um, and it's going to be subtracted. So the antiderivative is going to end up being uh, negative x to the fifth over 5. Uh, and then it's minus x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared plus 8x. And you're doing that out from negative 1 out to 2, and there's a pi out in front. Um, and eventually you should uh, get out uh, 117 pi over 5. If you do end up uh, computing that out and working that out by hand. All right. We have two more minutes left. See if you can remember what secant of x looks like. You should at least be able to graph y equals square root of 2, which, remember, is a little bit bigger than 1. So wherever you mark 1, mark square root of 2 a little bit above it. Just giving us some more space here. actually mark where 1 and 2 are. The square root of 2. That was the one you needed, right? And then you're good to go to graph the other one? Yeah. You should, you will also need to know the points of intersections. In other words, you need to know what secant is square root of 2. See if you can solve that. Cosine of 0 is 1, so secant of 0 is also 1. Um, where cosine is 0, secant is not going to exist. So it's going to have uh, asymptotes. Um, this is the one that looks kind of like a parabola, but isn't. And so uh, it has, like, from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4, what's happening is that we have this, uh, this thing. And then we have asymptote, and then there's another one down here, there's another one down here, and then it repeats. That's what secant looks like. So this is my region. So I want you to tonight, this is going to be another washer, right, because it doesn't uh, cross down through the x-axis. So this is going to be another washer. So see if you can draw out your washer, figure out what big R is, figure out what little r is, figure out what your bounds are going to be. That's going to be this equation. And see how far you can get on this problem. And then we're going to talk through it very quickly uh, at the start of class tomorrow.